Welcome to the He's Got Issues Independent Comics Edition number 147.3. I'm John Cooney here to preview new independent comics being released November 12th, 2014, beginning alphabetically with Boom Studios and Big Trouble in Little China number 6. Jack has always wanted to know when he's overstayed his welcome. Now it's time to split, especially after his old pal Pete the Demon is returned to the service of his original master and tries to take Jack's head off. Wang, Egg, and Jack narrowly escape town with the Wing Kong hot on their trail. As they burst through the honky-tonk of the American highways, the Lords of Death decide to join the hunt for Burton's head. Next, we have Bravest Warriors number 26. The Bravest Warriors get a distress call to a planet with a serious giant monster problem. It's the start of an all-new story arc from the creative team of Kate Leth and Ian McGinty. We've also got Clockwork Angels number 6 of 6. Once he was just a boy tending to the apple orchards, now Owen Hardy is flying a magnificent airship across the skies of Albion. In the course of this adventure, he learns a secret about his own family, one that will take him to the hallowed seven cities. Next, we have Deep State number 1. John Harrow doesn't exist, and his job is to make sure that other things don't exist too. At any given time, the government is running dozens of black book operations, experiments that aren't on any official record and are never acknowledged to exist. Some of these are innocuous, some of them are monstrous beyond reason, and most of the time they go as expected, and the public is never the wiser, most of the time. John Harrow's job is to handle them when things go wrong, and do anything to make sure the government's secrets stay just that, secret. We've also got Evil Empire number 7. The battle between right and wrong continues. The insanity escalates as our society edges closer and closer to the ultimate chaos that the movement's dark leader envisions for the country. Reese will have to move quickly with her resistance if she stands any real chance of being a threat to the Evil Empire. Next, we have Fraggle Rock Journey to the Everspring number 2 of 4. The Fraggle's journey has led them to the mysterious crystal caves where creatures of all shapes and sizes await. They'll need to rely on one another and maybe even sing a song or two if they're going to make it through to the Everspring. We've also got Hex number 4. It's a battle millennia in the making as Eves and Madame Cymbeline face off for the control of the Grey family with Lucifer, Reyna, and Val caught in the middle. Equipped with the binding frame and Michelangelo's torque, the Brizending Gallery Gala turns into a world-spanning war zone as Lucifer makes the ultimate sacrifice. Next, we have Team Dog number 3 of 8, Sports. Everyone has their favorites. Team Dog prefers to get his work out on the street skateboarding. But high school would not be what it is without football teams, cheerleaders, mascots, and the big game. Clear eyes, full hearts, teen dog. We've also got Thomas Halsop, number 6 of 8. A menace over 200 years old is back and plaguing New York City's subway system. Thomas Halsop is on the case, but just barely. The city hates him and even his friends are wondering if he's okay. He has to find an evil smoke monster, so no, he's not okay. Next, we have Uncle Grandpa number two. Good morning. I wonder what Uncle Grandpa has in store for us this issue. Belly bag. Wait a minute. I'm Uncle Grandpa. As your uncle and grandpa, I expect my nieces, nephews, and grandchildren to check out this brand new issue. The coolest guy I know, Pizza Steve, will be there. And of course, giant realistic flying tiger, Mr. Gus, and just maybe some more surprises. Please let it be a burrito. And we've got Wild's End number 3 of 6. Clive and the others can no longer deny the danger of the alien threat or the violence it's capable of, as they struggle to escape the alien targeting them and hope to survive long enough to find answers. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got Dark Ages number 4 of 4. Guardians of the Galaxy's Dan Abnett, when a goddess mercenary warband discovers an ancient and bizarre piece of alien technology, they find themselves enlisted in the violent conflict against cosmic demon invaders. Next, we've got Grendel vs. The Shadow, number 3 of 3. Matt Wagner's Grendel meets The Shadow. Eisner Award winner Matt Wagner brings this exciting miniseries to its dramatic conclusion as two pulp noir icons go head-to-head. -head. Will Grendel succumb to the seductive temptations of the past, or will The Shadow finally fall prey to the most dangerous foe he's ever faced? Who will prevail as the Master of Darkness? We've also got Grindhouse Drive-In Bleed Out, number 1 of 8. Grindhouse is back from the dead, and it's meaner, badder, and dirtier than ever. In the first of four new explosive opuses, scalped R.M. Gura joins the series writer Alex DeCampi for Sleigh Ride, a brutal holiday tale of revenge and supernatural terror in the driven snow. We're back just in time to celebrate the holidays in bloody style. Next, we have Itty Bitty Comics The Mask, number 1. The Mask is back, and it's Herman Shazbert's turn. 
When the mild-mannered zookeeper buys his wife a strange mask, the whole family wants to try it on. But watch out, Grandma Shazbert. It will put quite the pep in your step. From the guys who brought you the Eisner-nominated Itty Bitty Hellboy and Tiny Titans and All Yacht Comics, All Ages Mayhem from Art Balthazar and Franco, the mask is back and crazier than ever. We've also got Prometheus Fire and Stone number 3 of 4. Chaos breaks loose when a member of the Prometheus' recovery team is exposed to the dangerous and mysterious genetic accelerant. Now with the crew divided and hope for survival fleeting, a terrifying discovery offers a glimpse into the fate of the Prometheus and the colony on LV-426. Next we have Resurrectionist number 1. Are you near death experienced? Framed architect turned thief Jericho Way has discovered he is a resurrectionist, one of the select group of people who can not only remember their past lives, but become them. Two groups are now after his services, the Sojourn Corporation, which wants to exploit his powers for mysterious purposes, and a motley crew of modern-day tomb robbers who have been trying to pull the same impossible heist for 3,000 years, and if Jericho joins them, he may steal back his own future, a new creator-owned ongoing comic series. And we've got X number 19, the perverse pig man unmasked. A nameless man scarred from an encounter with the skin traders is wheeled into the hospital. Only Lee Ferguson knows that this John Doe is none other than Arcadia's most wanted, X. But the sicko surgeon that sliced him up is closing in to finish the job. From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Alice Cooper number 3. The Lord of All Nightmares is returned to his realm, but the demonic Aldronicus Black and Clay and Black aren't backing off, looking to drag their client back into the fold by any means necessary. Next, we have Army of Darkness 1992.1. With Ash getting hitched and the Army of Darkness continuously at the heels of the Chosen One, it's time to party like it's 1992.1. Dynamite celebrates the success of the Army of Darkness series by going back to a simpler time when the internet was young and cell phones were 10 pounds. This one-shot features stories that are classically ash by your favorite Army of Darkness writers, James Kahorik, Steve Niles, Elliot Serrano, and Mike Rack. Not to mention your soon-to-be new favorite, Colin Bunn, with a story that ties directly into the new story arc. We've also got Damnation of Charlie Wormwood, number 205. Charlie's life is falling apart. He seems to be losing more than just his son as he and his wife struggle with Junior's illness. But with help from an unexpected friend, can Charlie face the demons that come along with the decision that he's making? Next, we have Django Zorro, number one of six, featuring a story by Oscar award-winning writer-director and Django creator Quentin Tarantino and award-winning writer-artist-creator Matt Wagner. The official sequel to Django Unchained and the first ever comic book sequel ever done of a Tarantino film. Set several years after the events of Django Unchained, Django Zorro, number one, finds Django again pursuing the evil that men do in his role as a bounty hunter. Since there's a warrant on his head back east, he's mainly been plying his trade in the western states. After safely settling his wife Broomhilda near Chicago, he's again taken to the road, sending her funds whenever he completes a job. It's by sheer chance that he encounters the aged and sophisticated Diego de la Vega, the famed Zorro, and soon finds himself fascinated by this unusual character, the first wealthy white man he's ever met who seems totally unconcerned for the color of Django's skin, and who can hold his own in a fight. He hires on as Diego's bodyguard for one adventure, and is soon into a fight to free up the local indigenous people from a brutal servitude, discovering that slavery isn't exclusive to black folks. In the course of his adventure, he learns much more from the older man, much like King Schultz, and on several occasions even dons the mask and the whip of the fox. We've also got ex-con number three. Cody Pomeroy's violated his parole. He's cuffed and headed back to the place he dreads the most, the Slammer. He's dead if he shows up without having completed a little errand for a vicious crime boss. But then Cody is given just 48 hours to set things right, and he has no choice but to join forces with his ex-girlfriend to track down an arsonist hiding somewhere along the California coast. Next, we have Lone Ranger Vindicated number 1 of 4. The Lone Ranger and Tonto are called to the town of Red Mesa to help capture a vicious gang of thieves. However, things are not what they seem, as the masked man and his faithful companion find themselves entangled in a mystery and surrounded by killers. Next, we have Mercy Thompson number 2 of 6. Continuing the all-new Mercy Thompson comic book adventures by New York Times bestselling author Patricia Biggs. While more dead bodies emerge from the mass graves discovered by Mercy Thompson, her stepdaughter Jessie finds herself in the firing line of some unpleasant accusations at school, where only the new student is on her side. But is all as it seems? You've never read a Mercy Thompson story like this before. 
Voss got Red Sonia number 13, beginning a new Sonia epic that will shake the She-Devil to her core. In The Forgiving of Monsters Part 1, the Harkinian finds herself aiding a small village against a hideous and bloody infestation, while an enemy from her past threatens to crush her spirit forever. And we've got Sherlock Holmes vs. Harry Houdini number 205. After Harry Houdini's opening night performance is undone by a grotesque murder, he clashes with Sherlock Holmes when Holmes refuses to allow the legendary magician to help bring the perpetrator to justice. But the proud Houdini won't take no for an answer, leading to an epic game of cat and mouse in London's dangerous streets. From IDW Publishing, we've got Amelia Cole in the Enemy Unleashed graphic novel. Amelia must put her burgeoning career as the protector on the line to protect the once unknown world she now calls home. Meanwhile, the Omega Company is on its last legs, but it fights on against the magic-devouring enemy. Next, we have Angry Bird Comics number 6. Hold the cell phone a minute. The Angry Birds have lost their jobs to Angry Pigs. Is the mind-bending, world-changing, comic-defining penultimate issue of Angry Birds Comics finally here? Or have the Minion Pigs done something really silly that will likely get them in a heap of trouble with King Pig? We can't wait to find out either. We've also got Bigger Bang number 1 of 4. The Big Bang created all life as we know it. The Bigger Bang creates just one a being named Cosmos. Is he a destroyer? A hero? A god? All he knows is that he's completely alone in what was our universe, so he seeks out another where he'll be able to atone for the sins of his mysterious creation. From the inventive minds of DJ Kirkbride and Vasilis Goxilis comes a spawning space epic of multi-dimensional proportions. Next we've got Black Dynamite number 4 of 4, the man with the shuttlecock, when a basketball hero meets death on the court, his young trophy wife enlists the toughest private dick in town to shake the tree from the roofs and rake up the fruits. The world's baddest black exploitation sensation uses every deadly trick in his kung fu arsenal and unravels a shocking web of conspiracies that are bigger than professional sports and two brand new size 13s put together. We've also got Borderlands The Fall of Firestone number 4. The hit comic based on the hit video game continues. Outgunned and outmanned, Roland, Lilith, Mordecai, and Brick will use everything at their disposal to save the city of Firestone. But like all battles, what will the cost of victory be? Sit tight for a shocker of a finality in the last issue of this arc. Next, we have Dead Squad number 2. Betrayed by their superior officer, Blake, Cooper, and Shane find themselves unwitting pawns in a treasonous game, not to mention Stone Cold Dead. Even after being revived by cutting-edge technology, they remain prisoners of the U.S. government. But a life sentence in Leavenworth is the least of their worries, since the nanobots keeping them reanimated have a short shelf life, giving our heroes just 30 hours to set things right, 30 hours to make their resurrection permanent. We've also got G.I. Joe, a real American hero, number 208. G.I. Joe's operation in Dublin continues with the team blazing forward with a mind to avenge their fallen comrade. But when they discover the truth of what Pale, Peony, and Jinx have been investigating, G.I. Joe will have to make some tough calls and take tougher actions to stop the malevolent Ravranch Corporation. Next, we've got Hero Comics 2014, another great all-star one-shot to benefit the Hero Initiative, the charity that helps comic book creators in times of great need. Sam Keith provides an all-new Mac story, his first in nearly 20 years. Mike Grell takes us on a journey with his classic creation, John Sable, freelance. There will also be several Hero in Action one-page stories featuring real-life events where the Hero Initiative made differences in comic creators' lives. We've also got Indestructible number 9. As Tar's sinister plan is revealed, it's up to Barry to save hero and civilian alike, including Greg, who's kinda, sorta both. Outnumbered, outgunned, and way out of his league, Barry's chances look slim, but Farmstrong just might rise to the occasion, assuming he can avoid Tar's paramilitary guards and the distraction of an open bar. Next, we have My Little Pony Friends Forever number 11. Rainbow Dash is overjoyed when Wonderbolt Spitfire invites her to a special training camp. However, Spitfire is hiding a secret that she's ashamed to admit. Will Dash be able to help before the camp turns into chaos? We've also got October Faction number 2. Infidelity and incarnations can lead to some strange bedfellows as Frederick tries to convince his children to avoid his footsteps at all costs. It's hard enough trying to keep a family together without mechanical monsters knocking at your window at strange apparitions living in the closet, all in a day's work for the Allens of Crystalwood, USA. 
Next, we have Popeye Classics number 28, Ahoy, Ya Swab. Cartoonist Bud Sangendorf delivers another edition with stories like Thimble Theater Presents, Popeye and Sweet Pea and Money Bag, and Buddy, Can You Spare a Nugget? Tell your comic shop owner to be sure to reserve you a copy of Popeye number 28, the regular issue and the one with the variant cover by amazing artist Stephen Croninger, and all feature issues too. Whoa, one more thing, tell the good shop owner to be sure to eat their spinach. We've also got Rogue Trooper Classics number 7 of 8, the Adventures of the Only Surviving Genetic Infantryman continues. In this issue, the epic All Hell on the Dixie Front rolls on as the Nord Offensive hits Rogue and the Southers from air, land, and sea. Next, we've got Silent Hill, Downpour, and Story Number 3 of 4, an all-new tale spinning directly out of the hit 2012 video game Silent Hill Downpour and featuring fan-favorite character from Silent Hill lore, written by Downpour writer Tom Waltz. Next, we've got Star Trek number 38. The Star Trek events of 2014 continue in part four of the Q Gambit. Captain Kirk and the crew of the USS Enterprise find themselves in a true no-win scenario thanks to the mischievous Q. Trapped in a dark future at the mercy of the mighty Dominion, this adventure might prove to be their last. Don't miss this all-new story produced in association with Star Trek writer-producer Roberto Orsi. We've also got Star Trek Harlan Ellison's The City on the Edge of Forever, the original teleplay number 5 of 5, the final act of Harlan Ellison's Hugo and WGA award-winning Star Trek teleplay. Is James T. Kirk willing to sacrifice the woman he loves to save the universe as he knows it? You may have seen the episode, but you only think you know how it ends. From the mind of literary legend Harlan Ellison. Next, we have Super Secret Crisis War Codename Kid Next Door Number 1. The K&D discovers something even worse than the parents, the delightful children from down the lane, editors, and even asparagus when they get caught up in the Super Secret Crisis War. Challenged to a fight by a robot created by the evil Aku, the K&D find themselves in an impossible situation, win, and they're transported to Aku's space station, but lose, and well, they're goners. What's a collection of underage operatives for a super secret global organization to do? We've also got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles New Animated Adventures number 17. The Turtles face a multitude of their greatest foes in this action-packed adventure. The Turtles and their enemies are stuck in a dire spot and will need to work together to get to safety. But will they be able to trust each other? Next, we have Transformers number 35. Days of Deception begins. Prowl and the Constructions hunt the world's deadliest game. Three humans with a history of fighting Cybertronians. Lines are drawn as human and machines alike are drawn into the Onyx interface. We've also got V-Wars number 7, Joe Ledger and Big Dog, two top field agents who hate each other more than they do the vampires, have to find a way to work together to stop a new species of genetically enhanced vampire super soldier. How far into darkness will heroes go to stop monsters? How far is too far? Next we have Weird Love number 4, another sexy twisted issue of Weird Love, you know you crave Weird Love. This wacko issue includes seven retro lurid comics on trailer trash girls, plastic surgery, alcoholic gambling cheating men you shouldn't marry, bad mob girls using their earthly charms to criminally dupe men, not shaving, and the heartbreaking, heart-exploding lead-off tale, Too Fat to Frug. And we've got X-Files Season 10, Number 18. When we last saw them, Special Agents John Doggett and Monica Reyes seemingly met their final fates at the hands of the alien faction known as the Acolytes. Now in this one-off story, we'll reveal what actually became of them and what is in store for them next. From Image Comics, we've got Alex plus Ada, Number 10. Alex and Ada must find a resolution. Next, we have American Legends number 2 of 5, American Legends 1 through 5 weekly throughout November, depicting the extraordinary exploits of the legendary pioneers Davy Crockett, Mike Fink, and Sally Ann Thunder on a quest to save the Lewis and Clark expedition and thwart a conspiracy hatched by Napoleon to destroy the promising future of a young American nation. Featuring a unique look at the Hatfields and McCoys, Johnny Appleseed, Paul Bunyan, Sacagawea, and many, many more. These are the stories of the great frontiersmen who explored the magical and savage frontier before becoming mythical heroes in American folklore. These are the tall tales of our youth, known and loved by all. These are the American legends. We've also got Copperhead number 3. Sheriff Clara Bronson's plan to catch a murderer takes her deep inside the copper mine. Next, we have Death Vigil number 5 of 8. The enemy stands revealed. An ancient order of immortal necromancers known as the Pale Court has resurfaced, and Bernie is plagued by unclear memories and great sorrow as more Vigil members fall. One last Veil Ripper remains to be claimed before... We've also got Dream Police number 5. Who exactly are the Dream Police? Where do they come from? How are the prospective officers chosen? 
Those seem like fairly straightforward questions, except for that they are cover for a secret that goes back to the beginnings of civilization, a secret that must be protected at all costs, especially from the inquiries of Lieutenant Detective Joe Thursday. Joe has always been a loyal member of the Dream Police, but when his instincts as a cop tell him that the people he's working for are lining against him, how far will he go to find out the truth about them? Next, we have Drifter number one from the creators of Viking, writer Ivan Brandon of Wolverine and Men of War, and artist Nick Klein of Captain America and Thor reunite to bring you a sci-fi ongoing series joining the dark revenge themes of Unforgiven with the mind-bending sci-fi universe building of Dune. In its frantic rush to survive itself, mankind is spread across the universe, colonizing and strip mining countless planets. Abram Pollux barely survives a crash landing on Oru, a lawless backwater world where life is cheap. What starts as a struggle for survival quickly becomes a journey to the very edge of what means to be human. We've also got the fade out number three. Brew Baker and Phillips' new crime noir masterpiece is just getting started. Remember, every month the fade out has exclusive back page articles that are only available in the single issues. Next, we have Ghosted number 15. What happens after we die, and how far will some people go to find out? The answer to that and the reappearance of some familiar faces this month. We've also got Howtoons Reignition number four. High above the earth, Selene is trapped by the mysterious Stormbreakers, while deep below the ground, Tuck attempts to free himself from the leader of the orphans, he who burns. The kids don't just have to reunite with each other. Unless they get these two groups to stop warring and work together, their world is doomed. Next, we have MPH number four of five. After a taste of the high life, Rose is not sure she likes the changes powered by untold speed and wealth. Is that all there is? Meanwhile, her little brother Baseball digs into big, big trouble. Buckle up. Miller World's fantastic new superhero book stays in high gear with Miller and Fregredo's high-octane madness. We've also got Outcast by Kirkman and Azakeda number 5, A Wrath Unseen. As Kyle and Reverend Anderson travel further into this world, the true nature of things starts to reveal itself, and it's more terrifying than they could have imagined. Next, we have The Walking Dead number 134, From Whispers to Screams. And we've got Witches number two, a busload of children disappear in the woods, a strange bite grows on a girl's neck, and the witches are getting closer, creeping from the woods. Be there for the terrifying second chapter of the new smash hit, Witches. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Archer and Armstrong, the 1% number one. Remember Occupy Wall Street? We don't, but we know you lost and the villainous 1% won. Now in the wake of their greatest victory, a new vicious brand of 1% rises to the top of the class, and this time there will be no one to bail out their enemies. Don't miss this wealth of elitist entertainment introducing a brand new villain into the Archer and Armstrong universe. That'll be three ninety nine, please. Next, we have Q2, The Return of Quantum and Woody, number two of five. The legendary Quantum and Woody team of Christopher Priest and M.D. Bright reunite with a clang. Quantum and Woody are all over the news, but Eric Henderson and Woody Van Chelten are retired and officially getting too old for this ish. There's a new Quantum and Woody in town, there's still not a couple, and the mystery behind their existence threatens to destroy what little is left of Eric and Woody's one-time partnership. As a sinister secret organization besieges our heroes, will Woody unlock the secret of the new Quantum and Woody in time to save them, and will Eric let him? And we've got Unity number 12. All new arc, who are the United? A new day has dawned for the elite assemblage of heroes called Unity, and in the wake of the Armor Hunters invasion, the time has come to grow their ranks. Who will be the next fearless hero to join the roster of the world's most elite super team? And just what is the international strike force called the United? And why have they marked Unity's own Exo Man War, Ninjak, Livewire, and Eternal Warrior for elimination? Red Hot creators Matt Kent and Kafu detonate the planet's first super team versus super team to war right here with a bold new beginning for Unity. And out in trades, we've got Invincible Volume 20 Friends trade paperback. A new beginning for Invincible as things take a turn down a dark path. Everything changes as Invincible is betrayed by one of his own. You won't want to miss this volume. Collecting Invincible number 109 to 114. Okay, so that's a look at some of the top independent publishers this week, but there's still plenty of other books out as well, so be sure to check out my YouTube channel at he'sgotissues.com to see both the Marvel and DC videos for this week, as well as my usual roundup of all my favorites over the week, with a little more depth and insight than yet here. And if you like these videos, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. You can also follow He's Got Issues on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Tumblr to see everything I'm reading as I read it. So until next week, I'm John Cooney, and I've got issues.